Welcome back, everyone, to this evening's edition of Lehigh Valley Sports Scene. Dan Freemuth back with you here on the Service Electric Network. And so very pleased to be joined now by two international track cyclists currently training and competing over at Valley Preferred Cycling Center. We've got Amber Joseph from Barbados and Jean Spies from South Africa. Thank you both for joining us this evening. Thank you Thank for having you very us. Much, International riders hit the track this past Friday as part of the Festival of Speed. You guys were both competing there. Amber, let's start with you. Talk to us a little bit about getting back on the track, specifically at T-Town, and what the Valley Preferred Cycling Center at Trexler Town means to you track cyclists. Well, oh, where do I start? The, <laughs> the community, like the environment at T-Town, like it's, there's nowhere for me that's better. Like I love racing here and being able to come here every summer. Like now again, it's it's been it's been great. I've enjoyed every minute of it and seeing all old friends and being able to reconnect with people. Yeah, it's been really fun. We first connected in 2019. That was yeah. your first time uh, at T Town and Jean. You've been coming since 2017. Can you talk a little bit about how special a place Trexler Town is? Trexler Town is is probably the most the most talked about place to come for for anybody. It doesn't matter who who in the environment or in the sport you actually speak to. Everybody knows about Trex of Town, and it's one of those places where if I get asked from, from a rider, local riders, that where to go, what to start doing, it's like, just go there. <laughs> because, like Amber says, that environment, that atmosphere, the, the community, it's just something special that, that draws us back every single year, and, and we actually look forward to it. I think it's, for me, I know it's, it's one of the highlights of my whole calendar every year. Well, we are thrilled to have you guys back in town after... 2020 when nothing happened and that last year was a bit of a different format a bit of a different schedule amber you mentioned back like the good old days <laughs> um but but let's talk about kind of the elephant in the room that is the pandemic and how it impacted your guys you know racing schedule your training amber let's let's start with you can you talk a little bit about you know how things shut down and, and what you did and, and how you got back to where you are now yeah i mean over lockdown i think i was very lucky like all things considered, um, all of my family were safe, sound, healthy. Um, but at the beginning of lockdown, I was at the UCI center and we all got sent home. And I was just grateful to be at home and just training and spending time with my mom because I hadn't seen her that much in the past few like years because I'd been away racing. So it was nice to be at home with the animals, like just doing like family things every day. And I really, really appreciated that time. And then kind of like, was it like July? I think um, things started to pick up again. And then it shut down again towards the end of the year. And me and my mom, we decided to go to Barbados and we ended up staying there for three months when it was supposed to be like a month. <laughs> and I was super grateful for that because it's the longest I'd been home since we moved there in 2013. So I was just spending as much time as I could with my family there in Barbados and training, which was a great, training block for me because I was able to get a lot of hours in and just be able to train and not worry about being ready for any race because we didn't know when the next race would be. So I was super grateful for the time that I was at home because of yeah. COVID. But obviously seeing everything on the outside, it was, you know, it's, it's a, it was a scary time, I think, for everybody. Sure. And tough mentally. And, and nice to be back now. But the silver linings were that you got to spend more time with family, got to spend some yeah. time at home, which we know the kind of crazy travel and training schedule you guys have. That doesn't come part and parcel, you know, no. to this trade. <laughs> and, and Jean, for you, um, a bit of a, a travel situation, <laughs> hiccup, um, <laughs> and, and then eventually back in July, ultimately leading to the Olympics. Yes, folks, the Olympics. But let's start with kind of, right at the point of the pandemic, some travel issues, but ultimately ending it in a good spot. So for me, it started off going, I, I needed to go back to South Africa for national championships. And I was also at the UCI center and um, I had a connection flight through the UK and landing in the UK on my connection flight, we were told that the South African borders had been shut because of the situation down there. Um, so yeah, I was stuck in the UK. I made a phone call back to the UCI to see if I could go back. And they had told me that they'd sent Amber and everybody else that was there <laughs> home. So I was literally stuck in transit. But I was fortunate enough to, to be in a country where um, my manager lives. So I went and stayed with her and her family. Um, and with the postponement of the games of the year, I, it was, gave us a different a different opportunity um, to actually just progress through, throughout another year of hard work um, where a couple of co companies like e uh, ESP sent me equipment to, to train in the well, train in. So I had a, a, a home gym in the, in the garage um, using uh, indoor trainers and things like that to prep for the games. 
Um, so yeah, it was, as much as what it was a negative, it was quite a positive. Um, it was good to just be in, in, a, in a space where as much as what, I, what we were isolated, I was with good people and, and I was in a good, good mental space. So yeah, it all, it all worked out in the end. Um, for me, I was one of the first writers to head back to UCI. I think I was, I was actually more the test dummy than anything <laughs> else um, to see how it would work. But it, it worked out well in the end. Um, and then from there, training through the last part, or last part, we're, we're not even close to the last part of the pandemic, but that part of the pandemic, um, training didn't change much because we are so isolated and we do so much work yeah. um, within the gym and the track that we just kind of got on with the job at hand. Yeah. So it, it, wasn't, it wasn't too bad in that sense for me and culminating um, in the Summer Olympics. Congratulations, first and foremost. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, talk to us a little bit about that experience. I mean, the, the height of this craft that you've trained for for so long, what was that experience like? Um, to be honest with you, the, the journey to get to that point was, was probably the highlight of, of yeah. everything. Um, my, my goal was to, to qualify for the Olympics and knowing that when I walk into that stadium, I deserve to be there. Um, and you got there with, obviously, with the pandemic and the way that things were situated, the track was actually two hours, sorry, two hours, it was four hours outside of Tokyo. So we had to stay in a separate village um, and things like that. And you got to the village, you kind of got to the hotel and it, it didn't feel much different to a normal bike race. You know, you, you get to a Nations Cup or things like that. It's like, okay, you know, you kind of stay with the normal riders, etc. And then you walk into that track and you kind of look at the, the billboards and, and you just see all this Tokyo signage in your face and you're like, okay, this is a big deal. <laughs> um, so yeah, that first moment of walking into the track was, was immense for me. It was like a dream come true. Um, racing, racing at the Olympics and, and being able to, to compete the way I did, I know, yes, the result doesn't count for much, but f being able to know that I walked in there and I gave my 110% and did all the preparation that I possibly could and with the situation and the, the circumstances that we were all facing, um, I'm really happy with it and I know I t I'm, I'm truly blessed to have, have had that opportunity. Well, and I love hearing you say that the journey in qualifying to get there, the highlight, almost the most rewarding part because that's a much longer period of time, takes a lot more work than, than the races that you did have specifically at the Olympics. And there are so many factors that go into that kind of long-term success. I wanna to talk to you guys about the, the people outside of, we talked before about you're in your own little cocoon when you're on the bike, but there are people outside who have to support you to get to where you are. Amber, let's go to you because it's someone very near and dear to you who's <laughs> yeah. been a huge part of your cycling journey. <laughs> From the beginning, like my mom has supported me through the thick and thin, like winning, losing. Um, I think for her, I, I definitely wouldn't have been here. She's like my biggest sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, without my mom getting me to, you know, my first world nation cups, Pan American Track Championships, um, I definitely wouldn't have been as motivated as I am to do what I want to do without my mom. And I'm truly grateful for that. So. That's, that's wonderful. And, yeah. and, and John, for you, um, you mentioned, you know, being, being stuck in transit in the pandemic, um, but you mentioned that's where your manager, Bridget, lived. And, and that's actually where you stayed for, for quite a while and trained. Talk to us a little bit about specifically your relationship with her and how important the role of a manager can be um, for a track cyclist such as yourself? Um, I think I'd speak for both of us when, when it comes to this. Um, we compete about against nations that have a lot of staff and a lot of people that do a lot of things. I know the British system, if I'm not mistaken, work out like 10 staff to one rider, if something, <laughs> something ridiculous. You don't have that? We, we wish we had that. <laughs> we wish we had half of that. Um, but yeah, I have Bridget who is the unsung hero of my, my journey to the Olympics. Um, no, no way that I would have gotten there without her and her family. Um, she does everything for me, um, whether it be relation between myself and, and race organizers or trying to find funding, um, visas, everything, everything and anything that she can possibly help from an um, from a administrative point of view, she does that. And then on top of that, she's also a sports therapist, so she helps me stay, stay healthy within that. Um, and then obviously, like when, when you have those tough days that, uh, that you kind of need, need somebody, a firm hand yeah. telling you to <laughs> suck it up and get it done. She does that too. So um, yeah, she's, she's definitely that unsung hero that, um, that has gotten me this far. A jack of all trades. A, a jack of all trades and a master of all of them. Of, of many, yeah. <laughs> and, and part of that support system that you, know, you guys need to reach 
the heights of, of your abilities and your careers as you have done. Um, I, I want to end with this because that support staff not limited just to human beings because animals play a big part in this, Amber. Um, we know you're, you're, well, I know, our viewers at home now, lucky enough to know, you're a big animal lover. Yeah. Um, your mom, it's not a farm. It's not a farm because no, they're, they're all pets. pets. Um, <laughs> take, us, take us through the roster that you've got at home um, and just how important, how important these guys are for you and helping you kind of unwind off the bike. <laughs> Um, so <laughs> in England, where my mom lives and I live, um, <laughs> we have a few animals. Am I going through all of them? Sure. Okay. <laughs> we have as many as you can remember. <laughs> we have two sheep, four ducks, 15 chickens, uh, two dogs, my dog, my baby just had babies. Yep. So Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> um, she has five puppies. Um, we have a parrot. Um, my aunt has, I think, seven horses, yep. and I have a feeling I've left something out. Oh, and two cats. <gasps> oh, Can't yeah, forget two the cats. cats. Can't and a parrot. The cats. I think I said that already. Yes, but. Nigel. <laughs> Nigel. <laughs> we learned the parrot's name is Nigel. But important, you get to go home, and that's a yeah. way for you to relax and unwind, which is important yeah. with as hard as you guys have to train and compete most of the time. Yeah, like when I'm at home, it's like downtime. I like to do absolutely nothing with the animals and like <laughs> chill out with my mom and you know, pick up animal poo and feed them and, you know, all the nice stuff. Um, Day in paradise. <laughs> so, yeah, I love being at home. I'm a big animal person. I always have been. Um, yeah, so that's a big part of my world. That's wonderful. That's a big part of your world. So is riding a track bike and, and doing it very well. Yeah. Ditto for you, Jean. Uh, thank you guys so much for, for joining us this evening. Thank you for uh, continuing to come back to T-Town and, and inform our viewers about what a hidden gem Valley Preferred Cycling Center is. And best of luck the rest of the summer. Thank you very much, Thank Dan. you so much. Jean Spies, South Africa. Amber Joseph, Barbados. A pair of international track cyclists currently training and competing over at Valley Preferred Cycling Center. They're both back on the track this Friday. Don't forget SEN's coverage of all the action over at the Velodrome continues all summer long for our complete live schedule. Of course, you can get that online anytime at senetwork.tv. We're back to put a wrap on this evening's edition of Lehigh Valley Sports Scene right after this.